Achievements and trophies are such a fascinating concept. Introduced as a way of tracking certain accomplishments within a game, ever since then, they have evolved the meaning of what it takes to complete a game. When times were much simpler, you could complete a game and be pretty satisfied, opting to tackle either manufactured or purposeful challenges if you enjoyed the game enough. But that all became a bit more complicated with the arrival of achievements, as there was now a barometer for how much you had completed a certain game, as well as how supposedly good you were at it. Over the years, this has led to a lot of experimentation as to what makes a good or bad achievement list, as many games have featured some pretty devilish challenges. And this is especially true for Final Fantasy games. But Square Enix has seldom leaned too hard into many of the challenges adopted by the fandom. Instead, especially in more recent times, they have created lists that have bordered on the mundane. For example, every single Pixel Remaster has an achievement for completing the bestiary. For this video though, which is going to be looking at the rarest achievements found when looking at Final Fantasy games released on Steam, it's why we're going to try and avoid those mundane achievements, as they are often not completed due to how boring they are, as opposed to how difficult they are. So, without further ado, here are 7 ultra rare achievements. But before we kick things off with the Sea Paragon from Final Fantasy XIII, here's a message from the sponsor of today's video, Counterside, which you can check out via a link in the description below. Counterside is a mobile RPG developed by a Korean studio called Studio B-Side. It features lavish 2D graphics, some pretty awesome music, and one of the cool aspects is that even though there's a huge volume of units available, there's a ton of variety in terms of their designs, but also their classifications. You'll see characters like Yang Harren fighting alongside Titan, a hulking mech that classifies itself as the ultimate doomsday weapon. They will assist the player in progressing through a story that's told through a combination of animated cutscenes and visual novel sequences. It should be stressed that Counterside is a gacha game, but effort has been placed around making sure the story is enjoyable and progress doesn't rely too heavily on investment. There's also lots of free opportunities for players who aren't so keen to explore that side of the game, and right now there's an event taking place where you can try out 160 free gachas. If this sounds appealing, make sure to check out Counterside by clicking on the link in the description below, and if you do, use the coupon code CSGlobal2022 before the 29th of June to get 1,000 quarts, 10 employment contracts, and 1 million credit. Final Fantasy XIII featured an action-packed evolution of the traditional active time battle system called the Command Synergy Battle. It would have a strong focus on reactions, with the player able to switch character roles on the fly, allowing them to adapt to the ever-changing battle scene. Mastery of this system would feel very satisfying, but it would be necessary when attempting to work towards unlocking one of the more challenging achievements called Le Sea Paragon. This has been unlocked by just 2.1% of individuals who have purchased Final Fantasy XIII on Steam, which equates to approximately 14,000 people worldwide. And the reason that so few people have managed to accomplish this feat is that it requires the player to earn a 5 star rating on all of the Seathstone missions. Within the context of the battle system, star ratings are linked with battle score, with 5 star ratings only awarded if the battle score exceeds 13,000. For additional context, the default battle score is 10,000, and this is awarded if the player finishes the battle at the exact expected time, something which is calculated when entering into a battle based on a combination of the enemy's strength and the party's strength. Achieving 13,000 therefore needs the player to far exceed the target time, finishing the battle much quicker than expected. For many of the early Seath missions, achieving a 5 star rating should not pose too much of a problem. But as the difficulty of each battle increases, more nuanced strategies would need to be adopted to finish them quickly enough. And by the time the final sea stones are tackled, which would include fights against the very challenging Vercingetorix, players would be advised to make use of accessories such as the gold watch to stretch out the target time and make the fight much more easy to achieve within the allotted allocation. But as so few people have achieved this, even with the knowledge, it's clearly easier said than done. After launching as a huge success in Japanese arcades, Dissidia NT arrived with a lot of expectation when it launched on the PlayStation 4 a few years after. Housed within, players found a brand new story that appeared alongside a host of mechanics that had been added, and as time passed, they were also treated to a selection of characters that had never before appeared within the Dissidia franchise. 
The following year, Square Enix then launched Dissidia NT Free Edition on PC with the hope of bringing a whole new audience to experience the game, and those who decided to jump in would not only get to experience a rather unique fighting game, but also one of the most challenging achievement lists to have ever been created in relation to the Final Fantasy franchise. And that's even with it being toned down in comparison to the PlayStation trophy list. Even the simpler achievements, such as completing the basic trial in Gauntlet mode, have pretty low unlock percentages, and very few players have managed to unlock the character-specific achievements which require players to achieve an a battle rating with the same character three times. But there's one achievement that stands above all the rest. They're free. What an offer! With the Cydia NT, the developers decided to implement a gacha mechanic. Just like in the numerous mobile games, this would see players opening up some kind of prize with there being no guarantee as to the reward. In this case, the gacha mechanic was at least free, but as the majority of treasures could only be unlocked through the use of this mechanic, and to get a new term would take some time, it caused a lot of ire within the community, especially as previous games just allowed people to unlock what they wanted. This particular trophy required players to use the gacha mechanic 300 times, and to unlock enough treasures would take a considerable amount of time even if now known grinding exploits were being adopted, and by considerable we're talking 30 plus hours of just doing the same thing over and over again. As such, only 1.8% of players have ever unlocked this achievement within Dissidia NT Free Edition, which represents just under 2,000 people. When Square Enix decided to remake Final Fantasy IV for the Nintendo DS, alongside the new 3D aesthetic and more dense story, they also chose to introduce a ton of new content, including a brand new super boss called Proto Babel. Only accessible on a second playthrough, and only if the player had stolen the Dark Matter from Zerimus, Proto Babel could then be fought against by using the said Dark Matter when standing near the weird faced statue on the surface of the moon. A machine of tremendous power, the Proto Babel is a prototype of the Giant of Babel, which appears during the main story. As such, it has a ton of very powerful moves that can devastate the entire party if not suitably prepared. Light of Babel, for example, could easily wipe out any character, so it's recommended to only take on this challenge with a party at maximum level, with maximum stats, and with HP boosts in play. There are of course numerous strategies for attempting to defeat Proto Babel, but due to not only the requirements to unlock the fight and the difficulty of the fight itself, the achievement associated with defeating Proto Babel has rarely been unlocked. To date, only 1.7% of players have achieved this feat, which relates to around 1,200 people, and that means anyone who's beaten Proto Babel on PC sits within a pretty exclusive group. Final Fantasy IX features some pretty harsh achievements. And in a previous video we spoke about Bloodlust, which requires the player to defeat 10,000 enemies. But for this video, we're going to focus on the achievement called It's All in the Cards, specifically the third iteration of the achievement. Final Fantasy IX featured a fun mini-game called Tetramaster. It was a much more complicated version of Triple Triad that featured a boatload of cards, each with a dynamic attribute model. Winning would therefore require a decent amount of thought, especially as the difficulty of the opponents increased. For this specific achievement, players would need to go on the Tetra Master Warpath as you would be required to win 100 matches. But the extra challenge was that the wording was deceptive, as although it's true you would need to win 100 Tetra Master matches, they would need to be against 100 unique opponents. Not only would this therefore require some patience in terms of hunting down all the different potential enemies, but you'd also need a plan as some matches are missable. And then there is the skill aspect, as you'd need to invest in getting strong enough cards and having a good enough strategy to win the required matches. With these harsh requirements, it's no surprise that only 1.7% of people who have played Final Fantasy IX on PC have unlocked this achievement. Now over the years, fans have created numerous challenge runs for Final Fantasy games. Many of them involve restricting some aspect of the game with a view to making it much more complicated to complete as they require specific knowledge about equipment and abilities as well as how to exploit certain mechanics. We covered many of these during a video that we published back in 2019 including the fabulous Final Fantasy 1 Solo White Mage challenge. But what's very interesting is that even though it would fit with the initial intention of achievements, Square Enix has seldom leaned into these challenges when building out their achievement lists. 
but the original version of Final Fantasy VIII stands as an exception thanks to the contrived finish achievement. This plays into one of the core tenets of Final Fantasy VIII as its experience system doesn't function in the same way as other games in the franchise. And that's because even though characters can still level up, not only does the amount of experience required not increase with each level, but enemies will get stronger and gain access to different moves as you level up yourself. Based on this, it was made possible to defeat the game with just using knowledge of the junction system and minimal leveling, and this achievement played into that as it requires players to complete the game without Squall ever leveling up. For the most part, random encounters can be avoided and boss fights don't provide any experience, but there are some forced random encounters that do force experience to be acquired and knowledge of the game and how to work around these scenarios is crucial for unlocking this particular achievement and it's perhaps why only 1.6% of players of the original version of Final Fantasy VIII on PC have completed the feat. Final Fantasy XV features quite a broad selection of achievements, but one of the rarest comes from its last piece of downloadable content, Episode Arden. Unlike the previous pieces of DLC, which had achievements linked to specific modes that would be unlocked after completing the story, Return of the Founder King would have nothing to do with the Kingly Clash mode. Instead, it would challenge players to finish the regular campaign in a specific manner in order to prove their worth. Upon completion, this would see players judged based on performance across 10 separate categories, which included how long they spent in combat, what their maximum combo was, how much damage they had incurred, and the number of enemies defeated. To unlock the achievement, players would need to obtain an overall rating of A+, which would grant the absolutely astounding title. Because an average calculation is used however, this does not mean that every category would need to be A+. There was a marginal room of error, and it meant that either two categories could be dropped to A, or one could be dropped to B, but any categories being a C would result in failure. As such, this achievement can be quite taxing due to there being so many different elements to consider, and based on that, it's no wonder that only 0.7% of people who have played the DLC have achieved this particular feat. And that brings us on to our final achievement, Tonbury Treasure, which has only been obtained by 0.6% of people who have purchased the Final Fantasy X2 HD remaster. Unlike the original version of Final Fantasy X2, the HD remaster included Last Mission, an expansion of the base game that included, amongst other things, new story sequences and a very large dungeon. This dungeon would have 80 levels in total, with bosses fought every 20, and Tombray's treasure could be obtained after defeating Omega Weapon and getting all the way to level 61. However, just getting to that level would not be enough, as to get the achievement you'd need to gain access to the hidden Tonbury area. After visiting the floor, you would need to use the secret room file, but to make things challenging, you could end up in numerous secret rooms, and only one configuration would allow progress to the next stage. After the right room was found, the process would then need to be repeated, this time to land in a different room, and so on and so forth, until the entrance to the Tombury room would appear. Based on this, numerous resets may be required until the desired outcome is achieved, however, just entering the Tombury area would not be enough, as four Mega Tombrays and one Normal Tombray would then need to be defeated, and it would only be after this battle was finished, and the treasure was obtained, that the achievement would be granted making it a pretty devilish task, and it's no wonder that so few people have managed to complete it. But with that, I think we're done. They were seven of the rarest achievements you can obtain across all of the Final Fantasy games you can play on PC. Be sure to let us know in the comments below which of the achievements you have found the most complicated, and of course, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Alright everyone, with that, this is Daryl signing out. I'd like to extend a big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, especially Anthony Hoffman, Benjamin Snow, the Livestream and Gregory, who are super special Onionite supporters, and of course, a big thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.